Hey there, YouTubers. So let me start off. I do not actually have this product, um, but I have bought seven 600 series motherboards. So I like to think I know a little bit about what you're getting here. And this is basically my, my thoughts on it. If you know, if you want to actually see the product, you might need to go somewhere else. But uh, I have quite a few Asus motherboards very similar to this. Uh, only one of them has Wi-Fi. But uh, I am basically telling you this is one of the best deals on a motherboard with Wi-Fi. Now, are there cheaper ones out there? Yes, there is a gigabyte motherboard that's 139 and there is obviously ones that are more expensive than this now if you are out shopping for one of these motherboards uh, someone on a budget this is my recommendation if you are looking at something for a 12th gen i5 and below okay this is not ideal, in my opinion, for i7, 12700, or i9, 12900 when that comes out. This also would not be ideal, in my opinion, if you wanted to stick an i5, 12600K in it. For that, I would suggest... I'm going to show you that. This motherboard, okay? Uh, costs more. And at that point, you know, you can almost buy a Z690. Uh, maybe even another motherboard and get a Wi-Fi card. But if you need Wi-Fi built into the, into the actual motherboard, uh, I really like this one, folks. Let's let's just talk about it, okay? This is uh, PCIe 4.0, okay? It's not 5.0. Does that really matter right now? No, it does not. Will it matter a year from now? Maybe. Uh, is it going to be that big a difference between PCIe 5.0 and 4.0 in terms of actual gaming? It's questionable. If you do enough searches between PCIe 4.0 and 3.0, uh, you don't see some ridiculous difference in FPS. It's not double, okay? It's it's more like uh, 5 to 10%, I believe. Don't quote me on that. Do your own research, all right? So... What do I like about this? Well, uh, obviously, you know, PCIe 4.0 is good enough for most people, right? I've got a couple motherboards that are PCIe 5.0. I'll be waiting a long time till I get to enjoy that aspect. This has DDR4 RAM on it. Now, obviously, DDR5 would be a better selection, but for most of us, you know, DDR4 is affordable. It's more readily available, and we already own some of it, right? So that alone is pretty awesome. Now, by saving the money not having to upgrade a DDR5 RAM, maybe you can spend more on your CPU and get even more you know, performance than you would get by uh, going with better RAM. So if I think for most of us, this is what you need for RAM, right? Four RAM slots is great. Uh, you know, a lot of these micro ATX motherboards have two. Four is good, especially if, if you're like me and you have all kinds of DDR4 RAM, different brands, different sizes. Uh, sometimes, you know, I will have four of the exact same type, right? So uh, if I wanted to run 32 gigs of RAM for eight gig sticks, this is great for that. You know, obviously all the common stuff you're going to see, the 24-pin power connector coming from the PSU to power the motherboard. This does feature the ability to buy a case that has a Type-C Charlie connector on it, okay? So that is a positive. Doesn't have a lot of SATA connections. These days, how many people actually have a ridiculous amount of hard drives to actually connect to a motherboard, right? So I do have one motherboard that has, like, six hard drives connected to it 12th gen uh, that is the only one though right and i obviously use that for a lot of video editing now m.2s here's one of the things that's awesome about this okay yeah you could go with a full-size motherboard and maybe that would be you know good for some aspects but this guy has two m.2s on it okay nothing spectacular there because if you look around 
pretty much all the LGA 1700 motherboards have that. But what this does give you the ability is you have four full-size PCIe slots here, okay? Uh, one that is, excuse me, one PCIe 4.0 by 16 here. And I believe the rest of these are 3.0. Does not show them labeled, but you could have one graphics card here. In these days, as big as they are, it would probably cover this slot, but you have potentially two more places that you could put an additional M.2 on a um, PCIe card, okay? So that gives you the ability to have four M.2s attached to this. And of course, if you go with M.2 SATA, you could also buy one of those enclosures and plug it into a USB 3.0 uh, port on the outside. So a lot of capability here. Now, another reason I say, hey, this is for your i5 and below, this doesn't have the additional CPU power connector, which questionable whether the i7 really takes advantage of it. I'm pretty sure the i9 in the future will, okay? Case connector wise, a little weak on those for some of you, okay? You've got your CPU fan, CPU optional. Not a whole lot of other case fan headers, okay? Matter of fact, that is a weak point. So if you've got one of those really awesome cases, uh, make sure it has Molex con connectors, okay? What else do I like about this? You know, some of the stuff I never use, I kind of wish it didn't have, but it also has two USB 2.0s here, headers. And I do believe not only is this a USB 3.0, but this guy as well, which makes this thing even more awesome. And actually two, two Type-C Charlie headers on here. Um, dressable RGB. Now let's look at the side. Now, something I don't like, I hate these things. I like them built in. Six USB 2.0 or higher, right? If you're going with a CPU that doesn't have integrated graphics, or excuse me, it has integrated graphics, uh, you could take advantage of this, obviously, with two HDMIs, one display port. Nothing spectacular about the LAN in this. There's your Wi-Fi, boom. And nothing spectacular with audio connections either, right? The basic stuff. Now the antenna, I'm not sure if this is one of the magnetic ones. Those are obviously the best ones that you can stick on the side of the case. But it does look like a pretty solid one. So, I bought quite a few Asus motherboards, 12th gen, right? Um... Am I really impressed with the quality of these? Not necessarily, but um, am I impressed with the aesthetics of them? No. But I will say they, they've been pretty solid. I have not had any problems with the ones I bought uh, to include the Asus Prime H670 Plus, the Asus Tough Gaming B660M, the H610M-E, the Asus Prime Z690P, and there's one I'm forgetting. Uh, we have one other one in there. But that is, you know, pretty much what I bought for 12th gen. Uh, I like them enough that I would recommend this motherboard. And if you're trying to build a dream system, though, folks, this is not the motherboard, right? So other things to look at. When we talk aesthetics, this isn't the most attractive-looking motherboard, right? Doesn't, you know, doesn't have RGB in it. Uh light you know built-in lights right but it does have all of like you see there ARGB Gen 2 so uh, that part's good for your case but it just doesn't have you know that super awesome look to it and, and things like that or you know the header um, excuse me the heat sink or the VRM um, it's got one side doesn't have the other doesn't have the IO shield A lot of things on here that you know just not as attractive right but considering as expensive as motherboards are this is not that bad okay now obviously you see windows 11 ready right 
I don't think there's a single 12th gen motherboard that doesn't say that. So there you go, folks. Um, I may get one for the channel. Kind of don't really need any more B660Ms. I need to get rid of one before I can get another one. But this is uh, this is solid. Thanks for checking out the video. Please like, please subscribe. Thank you.